Good morning. Good morning. Dad gave me the signal that the internet is up and running, so we do welcome you to our worship service here, our second summer worship uh, gathering here. We have about 25, 26. I haven't actually counted them out, but we get to relax a little bit and catch our breath and still praise God in a very meaningful way. So a couple things uh, today. I wanted to announce that last Friday, April 12th, was Lois and Norm's uh, 60th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Commendable. So Norm, how have you done it? Would you do it over again? Yes, I would, and I think we just took our wedding vows very, very seriously, and we are still in love. That is great. You can tell that, can't you? All right. <laughs> that is great. 60 years. All right. Tonight is our first Sunday night movie. Um, starts at 6 o'clock here. There will be popcorn and a, probably a bottle of water, or bring your own snack. If you don't like popcorn, bring something you do like. Great movie called Risen. Um, you can watch the trailer if you'd like today, but it's a powerful movie about the evidence of our risen Lord and Savior. Good movie. A um, chair, too. What's this? A chair. Bring a comfortable chair. Don't use these. <laughs> but I bring a reclining chair that I sit back in, and it's, it's a lot better for viewing for a couple hours. So come back tonight, 6 o'clock. Okay, we have a celebrity here among us today. Anybody know who that is? Jesus. Jesus is here. All right. All right. Good point. <laughs> All right. You're always throwing a curve. So, Bill Wise will be 80 years old. And uh, today, after the service, we have a little gathering in Citrus West for some cake and coffee and refreshments. So, please join us after church is through. Also, Beanie um, is also having a birthday. The cat was let out of the bag. I didn't know that till this morning. But both of them are celebrating their birthdays. So let's sing happy birthday, shall we? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Beanie. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you, Bill, one of our choir members for the day. All right, folks, we are here to worship our Lord, to take this next hour, take it in and communicate with God. We are here to lift up the name of Christ. So let us do that. To begin, I always like to begin with a psalm. Our psalm of the week is Psalm 8, which says, O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught your children and infants and tell of your strength. You silence your enemies, all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky, I see the work of your fingers, the moon, and the stars that you have set in place. What are mere mortals that you should think about them? Us. What does he think of us? You made them only a little lower than God. You crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them everything that you made, putting all things under their authority. The flocks and the herds and all the wild animals and the birds of the sky, the fish of the sea, and everything that swims in the ocean currents. Our Lord, how majestic is your name. Let us watch this in video presentation this morning. Following that will be our first hymn where I'll give you a sign to rise, so we sing to God be the glory. But for now, Psalms.
this part of their service, I wanted to focus on our prayer list and mention the names of those that we are praying for. And I will go ahead and pray and then give an opportunity for you to mention a name audibly during the prayer. And any request that you might have, feel free to just, just audibly uh, voice that. But we need to remember our folks that we're praying um, for on our list. Dustin Sutton, Carolyn Place, Siobhan, Peter Joseph, Howard, Mason, John Wilhelm, Linda King, Bill Howe, Bill Hanna, Marilyn Long, who is having surgery tomorrow, breast cancer surgery. So pray for her more than once today if you can do that. And also for Rand Don Hill, for Pat King, John Heiss, Ethel Postoffer, Elena, Barb Barthel, Glenn Pratton, Kylie Week Anderson, Bob Jennings, James Farler, Janet Stevens and her daughter Katie, Priscilla McAllister, Rosemary Kuharik, Bob Jackson, who has made it back home to New York and Syracuse. Difficult time. They were uh, being moved by SkyMed, but of course that storm had canceled flights and they had to wait a little bit longer. So, uh, but, but uh, Linda did tell me that they got home, they made it. Uh, pray for Deb Woods, Mel Hines, Wendy, Wilma Hartley, Jean Post, Carl Beck, Rosie Cowan, Carol Mahoney, Mike Vaughn, Patty Wessel, Mark Leister, who's back with us today, Kathy Wine, Jim Preish, Charlene, who had good results and a good health report. Thank you for your prayers. Marilyn Mills, Bill Bigelow's sister, Kathy Bigelow, who is in hospice, Ron Hicks, Matthew, Darlene Levengood, Deborah, Betty Gilson, Nancy, Keith Crone, Barbara Rausch, Will Blaney, Christine Johnson, who is a worker over at Daystar, the, the ministry that we uh, support here at the park. She was in a bad auto accident, so please pray for her. Ronnie Brooks and Charles Dyer, who is Libby's brother, and Tanya Rowden. Uh, Jim and, and Tanya are on a cruise way out past Hawaii um, between uh, Fiji and Tahiti. Tani became extremely ill on the cruise ship. She had a bowel blockage, and uh, so she needs to get back to the States. They're thinking about medically evacuating her, and Jim is in the process of working with the cruise ship insurance. Good plug for those of you for future travel. But also SkyMed, which will take over once they cross our border here into the States. But she needs to have surgery, whether it be in Hawaii or San Francisco. So please pray for Tanya. And Pat Butler is also in the hospital. So please pray for, for these folks as we lift them up. I'll give you an opportunity to mention the name during our prayer that you would like to pray for as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we hear the names and different situations, the people of Israel, war-torn nations around the earth, world this hour in our very own country. We lift these concerns to you, Father, and we realize that you're a God who is higher and in control, sovereignly control of our universe. At times from this angle, we, we are frustrated by things that we see and encounter, and I know that there are folks who are suffering on our prayer list today, and I just pray that your healing hand would extend over the names mentioned here today, even for the ones that we're about to mention and for those who are unmentionable. You are a God who heals, sustains, creates, forgives, and keeps us into the future and our future generations yet to come. We ask for a wisdom to weather these days ahead. We ask for your care and guidance. We thank you for Jesus, who has risen from the tomb and is now working as our advocate between you and us. Highlight those things, dear Lord, in our hearts and our souls that break that fellowship between us. And I pray that you will lead us into a better tomorrow, that we can come back as a stronger person and reflect that image that we bear, which is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, as we silence this room and ask for those 
names that will be mentioned and even the ones that are unmentioned we know that you're at work your spirit unites us let us open this to your people Bob Duker, John Dancy. Daryl Long for Strength to Help Maryland. Roz Schoonover, recovering from cancer. Lord, I pray for Abby Harville, who's carrying twins and experiencing difficulties. I pray that you might just be with her until such time as the twins can survive outside the room. Thank you. Thank you. If you're in control, we praise your name. Carol Mahoney's not doing very well. Mickey. David Bolt, jaw Lord, you have heard the pleas of your people, and we know that you hear the pleas that we do not utter those things within our soul. You came to be with us, to be present with us, to walk among us, and to dwell with us. We ask you, Lord, to continue to work in our lives, even when it seems that we're in an unfavorable situation. We know that you always work out the good for those that love you. We thank you for this time here today for our worship. May we edify and have it be a pleasing sound to your ears and to your very soul as well. And Lord, we ask that you will bless the tithes and offerings that follow, that you will use these uh, offerings to better the work of your church. We thank you for those that support this ministry. Bless the gift and the giver, and your promise to always give back, even though we only supply a little portion of that. Thank you for your blessing. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
church said? Amen. Amen. Powerful song. I just, first couple weeks I viewed that song, I just had more tears than I've ever cried in a long time, knowing that Christ is our advocate indeed. So today, the title of this message appropriately, Who Are We? And then I pulled this out of Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 through 13. And this explains in sync with Psalms number 8, who we are in light of God. Let me read Hebrews chapter 2, and it even mentions part of what the uh, Psalms chapter 8 said. And furthermore, it is not angels who control the future world we are talking about, for in one place the scripture says, Psalms 8, who are we mere mortals that you should think about us? Or the Son of Man, that you should care for him. You made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them authority over all things. Now when it says all things, it means that nothing is left out. But we have not yet seen all things put under their authority. We do see in Jesus who we are given a position a little lower than the angels because he suffered death for us and is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, it is by God's grace that Jesus tasted death for everyone, God of whom through and whom everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory, and it was only right that he should make Jesus through his suffering a perfect leader and fit to bring them into their salvation So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same Father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. For he said to God the Father himself, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters, and I will praise you among your assembled people. And he also said, I will put my trust in him, that is, the children that God has given me. That's you and I. What a powerful message from our risen Savior that's still in effect today. And in our Bible study class, we are talking about the old covenant that was made from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that's still in existence today. We are grafted into that line of the family of faith. It's, if we're a Gentile, it's likely that we are part of one of those 12 tribes, probably Nephalti or Zebulon, which was the northern region where Jesus first took his ministry up in the upper region of Galilee. Those were the Gentile areas. And so they probably came to faith through those sojourners that were up in that area. Think back to a time when your parents went away for an evening on vacation or maybe took a trip. Who did they leave you in charge of as caretakers? Mr. and Mrs. Who? Sudlow. Sudlow. (laughs) Bernie remembers those babysitters, right? Were they babysitters or you're a teenager? I 
I was younger than a teenager. Okay. So I didn't want my parents to go. Okay. <laughs> We've had separation anxiety. My cats have that when Jody and I go to town. But, uh, <laughs> but think about who was in charge of you that, that took care of you until your parents came back. Do you, how did you perceive these individuals? Pretty favorable? Strict? Easy going? Okay. Because I was crying. You were crying, so okay. Well, I imagine if I were to interview each of you, you could tell me stories about these individuals. Did the rules that they impose on you seem favorable? Were they easy to get along with? Um, maybe you were given a treat for doing well, so forth like that. God created you and I with his very own hands and fingers. Matter of fact, the set of fingerprints that you have on your hands is the only one in the world that you're identified with. That's how personal and intricate that he creates us. Take a look at uh, Psalms 119 when you have a time, a lot of time. It's a big chapter. But how intricate we are made. And he set us upon this earth to take care of his creation. And... Therefore, we raise gardens, we raise crops, we farm fields, we uh, all have talents. Look at what's done in our garden down here at TR and the people that are gifted to do that. There are people that take care of the golf course out there and everything in between. Can we do anything that we want under the kingship that we have as God's creation? What are our limits? Think about these things. What's our responsibilities? Having freedom over God's creation gives us a unique responsibility to do good and to share that through love and responsibility. The big question of this sermon is, who are we? And this depends on who you ask. How many pessimists do we have in our crowd here today? Be honest. Nobody wants to admit it, but we know we can be pessimistic at times, right? Now, how many optimists do we have? Oh, there goes a few hands, okay. Some of you didn't raise your hands. <laughs> We're not going to make any assumptions because we don't judge others. But if you were to ask a pessimist about who you are, what kind of things do you think they would say? Well, they're likely to focus on the negative traits of others. Maybe... Evil outweighs the good, and bad things are going to happen sooner or later. It's just coming. You can hear it. And to our pessimists, there are times where there's just not much hope. Things don't look good. Things could get worse. Now ask those other people, the optimist, to describe you. What would optimists say? Hope. Hope. That was a big word, and that's in there. Greatly blessed. Greatly blessed. That's right. <laughs> okay, so the mood changes a little bit, doesn't it? It begins to change. God is an optimist. But people who are optimists, they focus on positive traits of others. And they believe that things can turn out for good. Matter of fact, Romans 8.28, we studied that for about 10 weeks Monday night throughout season. God can take things and turn them into good for those who love him. And... They always, good always wins. We know that we believe hope exists. That's the word that John uh, had mentioned. Hope is our first banner at Christmas time, always, because we know that the best is yet to come, and that's how we live as Christians. Have you ever wondered, being here in Florida at night, we have a great privilege to go out and look up at that night sky, and all the stars that are up there, just amazing who are we that God should be mindful of us? When you see that great display in the sky, you see all the animals that are around TR, even the little lizards that have a purpose, they're getting the mosquitoes, and everything in between. And God says that he even cares for the sparrow of the sky, yet how much more that he cares for you and I. How could God show concern for people who constantly sin. In a world that we live in, we know that our world is at war right now. How could God possibly love us in these difficult times? On the scale from one to five, 
one being not very much and five being greatly how important do you feel to God yourself don't answer that how important do you feel to God God created you he set you in this uh, generation we call the millennium this this part in time to serve him and love him and in others that we call our friends he feels that he loves you with great importance. We all have unique uh, traits that set us different from others. Um, we hear about in verses 5 through 8 in this Hebrews passage how he humbles humanity. Our position in creation is one of great importance because right before he rested on the Sabbath, he creates man and woman to take care of the world that he created. So he... That's a process of, hum of, of humbling us. He put the glory of his design within us. We bear his image. Um, Mickey looks a little bit like God. Mark Leister looks a little bit like God. Dick Gutridge, John Tree. We can go through this whole crowd. And the women, we all look somewhat like God. And skin is only skin deep. But think of your soul. That same soul was on God's shelf in the kingdom of heaven until that day he said, ah, 1955, there goes that soul to be born into my creation. So you should feel very important to God and where we are. We do embrace limitations here on this earth, but one day those limitations will be lifted when we are called home to be with him in that final redemption. But for now, we have to embrace certain things. Some of us walk with canes and walkers, and we're not as limber as we used to be. And I'm beginning to learn that as I'm between 50 and 60 now, and hearing all the stories that you have to tell, we do have limitations. But we lean on each other. That's why our volunteer fire department here there are uh, several individuals that get up, leave what they're doing, and go help others when that siren goes off. There are plenty of people that support the ministry of this church. The numbers financially this year would astound you, and we're going to bring you those at some point. But we have supported our ministry far greater this year than we have in years past. We are blessed, and we have done that embracing our limitations because we know... When, when the offering basket comes, and it's obedience, right? God doesn't care if there's a $10 bill or a $5 bill or a $100 bill. He's the one that created currency, right? And the things that we have, that currency has changed over time. We don't have animals, but we have bank accounts nowadays. Our wealth has changed. But he always gives us exactly what we need. And if we're responsible with that, we get more. It's amazing. I have never been able to outgive God. I've given when it hurts and when it feels good, and I can tell you the blessings overflow. And that's just his promise to us. We need to respect God's majesty, and we must compare ourselves to his greatness. Who are we that he should care for us? We disappoint him. At times, we make mistakes. We treat others with contempt at times. There is dissension. But God always brings us back to center. He places his Holy Spirit within us and makes it possible for us to make amends. We have to agree to that. That's part of the new covenant. I am here to bless you. Will you accept this blessing? God gave humans a tremendous authority that we have to be in charge of the whole earth. Some of that's going very well in this country, but in other parts of the world, that's not going very well right now. But we know that God cares. We know that he is in control. And we know that he will win. And he is the victor. How are you using your resources that he gave you? Are you making your lampstand shine brightly? Because Jesus gave us a warning in Revelation if we do not use what he gave us to his benefit, he will remove that lampstand. That's just a warning. And he's very, very uh, liberal about his uh, use of that. He gives us time to get things worked out. 
We are honored by God, verses 9 through 10. Think of the incarnation of Christ, redemption through his son's sacrifice. That's something that you and I could never orchestrate. It was given to us simply through an act of grace and mercy for us. So we are restored in relationship with God. That video that we just saw with that artist Charity Gale is her name, and, and she realizes just how much the blood of Christ has saved her and now keeps her until that full day of, of redemption. God's grace had led Christ right to his death. He made the decision, I will go for them, I will die for them. A good shepherd always dies for the sheep. We know that the 14-year-old that was killed in Israel over shrapnel that fallen from the sky happened to, to, he was in the path of that. That 14-year-old was a shepherd. Um, I don't know if he knew that. I was told that this morning. But think of that. Even young David was 13 or 14 when he was called into the service of God. And uh, he was a proud Israeli, by the way. And he, uh, it could be said that he died for his nation serving God's sheep. So think about that. Jesus was made the perfect leader or pioneer of salvation through his suffering as the complete sacrifice that God required. He knew that you and I were not up to that task. We try very hard to please God, but you know what? It's not quite enough. So he did the rest. And he did that because he loves us and cares for us. Now we are heirs of salvation. The remainder of chapter 2, verses 11 through 13, we are unified through Christ. We have sanctification through suffering. Good thing that sanctification takes care of about the age of accountability till we know we might believe in God until the very day that we die. Sanctification is covered all during those years. No matter how old you are, God is still working in your life. And he promises to give you an eternal reward. Should you simply believe, confess your sin daily, and believe in who he is. That's what's required. So, brothers and sisters, it was clear that he covers everyone. So, think about who we are in the eyes of our Heavenly Father. We are his beloved children. We are created with purpose. We are crowned with honor and glory. And we are sanctified as part of his family. May we walk in the light of this truth and live out our identity as children of God every day. And may we live to give that title we have earned merit. May we give him back honor and glory through our lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we consider the words of Psalms, the Psalm of David, as well as these words in Hebrews chapter 2 about how much value that you gave us and you crowned us with and you have sanctified us. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus decided to stand up to be our advocate, that he is watching from afar, and he is waiting until that day where every soul that he has called or would come to him would accept that wonderful gift of eternal life. I pray that this crowd here today, those watching on the camera, have weighed this very awesome gift that we will never, ever die, but we will live on and be with peace in that eternal kingdom. I just pray that you'll lift up these hearts here today, that weighing out this message, and that our life this week will be much better according to your holy word. Thank you for this time to worship today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, which the lyrics will appear on the screen, and then we'll have our benediction followed by Go in Peace, which is printed on your bulletin.
is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. us or something that supports us, someone who catches us. Next week begins Passover on the Monday night, 22nd, and during the Passover Seder, they lean on the person next to them to drink the cup of wine, and to that's where we get leaning on the everlasting arms of our Savior. So that's the origination, how it changed under the covenants, but isn't that interesting that that's still present with us today? We're leaning on those everlasting arms. Let us sing Go in Peace. Don't forget to stay for a little piece of birthday cake over in Citrus West. And don't forget the movie tonight at 6 p.m. Who can refuse popcorn? That sounds great, doesn't it? I'm ready. Let us sing Go in Peace. Go in peace and the peace of God on this day be blessed. Go in peace and the peace of God giving travelers rest. Celebrate and share the joy, celebrate new life. Go in peace and the peace of God, blessing travelers rest. Amen. What a beautiful service today. Thank you for your attendance. You came back, which is impressive. <laughs> Quite. Oh, have some, take some chairs over, right? Okay, take a few chairs with you. Thank you so much. We do have to collect the remainder of those.